Hello everyone, welcome back to our Spring Security with Angular tutorial series. In this video we are going to be continuing where we uh, stopped in the last one. As you may remember in the last one we have created our current user class. So this is our implementation of it. it the current user implements the user details and we have two properties that are important for us. It's the username and the password and everything else we kind of hard coded. So we have this granted authorities which we are not going to be using in this tutorial. Um, but we're just showing it here how we can use it. Then we have our password, our username and then some of the uh, methods that um, give some additional information about our account. Okay, great. Now what we are going to be doing is we're going to be creating a repository. So for now we are not going to connect to the d database. So to, um, to an actual database, we are just going to be using in memory um, implementation of a repository. So we're going to hard code some users that we can use to log in. But don't worry, in some later videos, we're going to change that and we're going to be using an actual database and then we can going to query the users from there. So let me show you how we can do this. Uh, let's create a new Java class and uh, let's name this one um, something like user in memory repository. And here it is, so nothing really fancy. What we are going to be using to keep our users in memory is just a hash map. So let me create that really fast. And here it is. So we have, um, yeah, an implementation of um, private, let's make this static, private static final hash map uh, string current user. So we're going to be mapping the username with the current user object and this will be uh, called registered users. Okay, yeah, uh, now we want to implement um, a method which will going to be used to pass in a username and then query the user from our uh, repository. So with our repository, so from the our in-memory database and uh, return it. So let me just uh, build you really fast this method and then we're going to explain what it does. And here it is, as you can see, quite simple. It's named find user by username. We are passing in a string which represents the username and then we are uh, going to our registered users and we're just fetching it. If it's not there, it's not there and yeah, that's it. Um, now the next thing that we need is we need some users. So we're going to uh, just generate them on startup. So post construct, um, let me just build it really fast and then I'll explain you what I did. And here it is. We have created two methods. One is this uh, setup users, which is basically called on post construct, um, uh, which is used to um, put two users in our in memory database. So let's call it database. And as you can see, we have a user with the username user one and user with the username user two. And we're calling this build current user method with two properties, username and password, um, which we are just going to build an instance of the current user object, uh, set the username, set the password. Oops. And instead of now, we're going to return the current user. So this is called here. And as you can see here, the passwords are these uh, strange strings which they represent, they are encoded basically. So the, those are encoded passwords. How I got them, I used the um, Bycrypt encoder to build these. We're going to come to that later. For now, you can just copy these. I will have them in the description so that you don't actually have to type this out. And uh, what this string represents is just user one. So username uh, and password is also user one. So the same as the username, but just encoded. And this is how they're going to be stored in a database also. So um, I want to keep it authentic as possible. And for this one, it's the same as just user two instead of user one. Um, but don't worry if you um, don't want to type this out later on, you can just put whatever here for now. Later on, we're going to show how to, you can actually encode some password of your own and then just paste it here. Okay, so for this one, so for user in memory repository, we are done. We are going to actually annotate this with a component annotation just to tell Spring that this is one of our components. And then we are going to build something called current user service. 
So um, let me create a new class, name it current user service. And um, let's annotate it with service. And this is current user service is going to be called um, whenever we are uh, authenticating our users. So when we want to verify if this user actually exists. And um, to do this, we need to implement something called user detail service. And this user detail service comes from, again, uh, Spring security uh, from the core, and we need to implement one method called load user by username. And what this will be um, will actually load our user by username. And here you can, when we do it with the database, here you can actually use the JPA repository or you can use our in memory repository, which we are going to be using. Um, basically, it means that this will be called by Spring whenever you are um, making a request and we try to find the user, it will call this one and then it will try to find it. And um, for example, imagine that you're logging in and you provide some username and password. The first thing the Spring is going to do is he's like, okay, uh, I need to find this user. I have the username, let's load it. And uh, if he can't find it, then he throws this username not found exception. And that's quite simple actually. And what we want to do now is we want to eject our user in memory repository. So let's do this. So we're going to be private, final user in memory repository. Let's name it repository and let's create a constructor. Uh, add this one and add outer wired. And what this does now, if we go here, we can call repository get our find user by username so the method that we just implemented and this should return us um yeah current user let's name it just current user let's make this um final and as you know if you go here if i pass the username user one it will find it if i pass username user two it will find it but if i pass anything else as a username it will not find it, it will return now so we need to do some checks here so what we are going to say is if um, current user is uh, null, we are going to do what? Well, the hint is here. We're going to throw the username not found exception. So we're going to say um, throw new oops, uh, username not found exception with some nice message. Um, failed to find user by username, something like that. Failed to find user with username and then we can just append the username here and maybe it puts um, like this yeah great and if we actually have found it we just return it that's it it's actually quite simple <laughs> nothing nothing really uh yeah nothing really super special here i think that would be everything for this um class can be a record yeah that would be everything uh for this tutorial so we created um, two things. We created our in-memory repository and we have created our user service. Uh, the user service will be used to load the users by username whenever it's needed. So whenever Spring needs it. And we're going to use this in-memory repository for now to load them um, from memory. And if it doesn't exist, we throw some exception. Later on, we are going to change this with the JPA repository. So we're going to actually load it from the database. But for now, let's leave it as it is. Okay, great. Then I guess we are done for this video. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.